I'm competing against the best arm wrestlers in the world, and many of them from Eastern Europe. But why are they so strong? To figure this out, I had their training videos translated from Russian to English. I discovered training advice that convinced me to completely change the way I've trained for over two decades. It's something I completely disagree with. Let's watch to the end and find out. We're here today with Tara Sivakin, who is going to show you how to train an unbeatable top role. Tara Sivakin is a legend of arm wrestling. Probably one of the best Ukrainian arm wrestlers ever. I took John Zing to his limits. It's really cool to get to see this footage. This is a perfect lift for training your top role that mimics going against another top roller. Place your pinky and index fingers inside of the loop and your middle and index fingers on the outer side of the loop. Engage your riser and make sure that you're not dumping your wrist. You can see keeping all that leverage going back and it's perfect for someone to be countering a top roll with a top roll. You can hear it all the time. Hook a hooker and top roll a top roller. So he's mimicking how to top roll a top roller here. So it looks really good. Just seeing the different angle shows you how he keeps his hand inside the center of his chest, dropping back crazy amount of back pressure. This exercise is quite similar to the one I showed you before, but there is one nuance about it. In case with this lift, your whole hand goes through the loop. This will take a lot of pressure off of your fingers, which will have a slightly different workload distribution when it comes to the muscles involved in a top roll. So the looping it through the hand exercise is very common. Um, the people doing it today are basically considered bicep training, um, not necessarily riser training or any type of pronation. But you can see that you are having to keep your knuckles high and your riser engaged. But now it'd be considered more of a bicep exercise than anything else. This is another amazing top roll lift that you might have seen before, but I'm hoping I can show you the right way of doing it. Make sure you don't dump your wrist and your hand is intact. And make sure you do this lift in a full range of motion. I believe that partial range of motion leads to partial results. But I completely disagree on his take on partials, and I will continue to do those in my training. But that's not all. We had three videos to review, a four-hour reveal, what convinced me to completely change my way of training. Here's Dennis Simplikov. We've arm wrestled nine times in our career. I've pinned him three times, he's pinned me five times, and he won once on fouls. It's really cool to see that in his warm-up, he's doing dips in these massive muscle-ups, right? I guess he's just trying to get the whole chain warmed up. So it's, it's really cool to see. He's 300 pounds, and he's sitting here doing muscle-ups, stringing them together. That's gymnast strength at a 300 pound body. Crazy impressive. I'm very close to my upcoming tournament, so today and my last training sessions are all gonna be focused on hits, on explosiveness. And even though everything is gonna be very explosive, the main goal today is not to get injured. I'm doing a single arm bicep curl using an Olympic barbell specifically for balancing purposes. As opposed to the easier curl bar, this one will make my stabilizer muscles and my forward wrist much stronger. The nuance with this exercise is that if you grip just half an inch left or right more, it will make it a lot harder. And the purpose of this movement isn't specifically to curl the weight, even though that's what you're doing, but it's more so to be stable while doing so, to engage those stabilizer muscles. In a sense, the stability required to perform this movement is similar to something that you're trying to accomplish on the table. So watching him do these one-arm barbell curls is cool because he actually trains it. I used to do it just as a novelty, right? Uh, I've actually went as heavy as 145, so like 66 kgs or something. But to see the fact that he trains it regularly is pretty cool. And when you look at this, the development in his arms are insane. Like, it's fun seeing the older version of Semplenkov because he truly was this hulkish figure. Many try to cheat through this and lift it with both arms and then keep it stable with one arm. This is not the way to do it. You want to lift it with one hand throughout the movement. Now that we're really close to my competition, I'm going to be working more with the bands, practicing explosiveness and my starting position. A week before the competition, most arm wrestlers, or if not all arm wrestlers, implement uh, band work into their routine. It's interesting that he says most, if not all, arm wrestlers or the bands that we can work. I mean, it does make sense what he's doing, keeping blood in there, but I, I think that just shutting everything down and just healing is what's worked for me. I think Devin does movements that last week as well. I think he does some very light work that last week. So there could be something to it. What do you think in general is the place of bench press in the arm wrestling world? And you hear this debate a lot. I believe if you know how to arm wrestle and you increase strength anywhere, you're a stronger arm wrestler. But there's something about benching, especially if you're gonna be pressing, applying side pressure, Having a strong chest matters, right? But also it's a confidence behind moving heavy weight. When you feel strong, you can be strong. You know what I mean? So I want to hear what he says on this. 
Yes, I do like bench press, like I said. It is it definitely has a place in my prep. But I don't bench press like power lifters or bodybuilders. My bench press is done with a significantly narrower grip. I'm not chasing a perfect form to optimize the engagement of my pecs and my delts. My goal is to gain strength in my arms. What exercises do you consider foundational for arm wrestling and the ones that every arm wrestler should have in their routine? And since we're arm wrestlers, the most important thing is your arm. Your arm needs to be strong in every possible way. And even when it comes to that, I can't just tell you train your biceps. You need to train everything. Your hand, your forearm, your biceps, your fingers. And then you go from there. And especially if you're professional, then you need to make sure that your back is strong, your chest is strong. I'm of the same mindset. The sport has kind of transitioned into very, very specific training. And I still am an advocate that your body needs to be strong everywhere. But I think there's a place for both. If you could do a hybrid of both, that'd be awesome. If you could do your sport-specific stuff and also just build a powerful body... I think you could create the perfect arm wrestler, you know. Um, I would say for arm wrestling, biceps is the king. So yeah, I'm talking specifically about cheated standing biceps curls. And uh, some people might argue with me on that, and they will tell me that I need to focus on strict curls, uh, strict curls leaning against the wall, but I, I don't think I need it at all. I'm chasing explosiveness and speed. My goal is to put a lot of work on my tendons and joints during my training session to the point where they ache after it, not my muscles. So we're about to go into a very interesting segment in this video with Dennis Simplinkoff. He talks about the contrast between how he believed he should train in his early days to how he believes he should train now. Can you please tell us what do you think about a seated biceps curl? A f***ing amazing exercise. Uh, the point is that you're supposed to iterate seated, standing biceps curls, strict curls, cheating curls. It isn't really something I would recommend to grow one's biceps, but for arm wrestlers, this is a perfect exercise because you're working really hard to maintain your angle. Something that resembles a common arm wrestling situation when you're at the table. When you're on the table, your opponent stretches your arm, you make a stop at the, by the pad, and you're trying to recollect yourself. That looks a lot more like a strict curl rather than a cheating curl. When you're doing seating curls, you get to feel really strong because you're moving a lot of weight. It sort of makes you feel really good about yourself. However, whenever you're doing cheated curls, you are missing a certain range of motion that is an extremely important thing in arm wrestling. That initial range of motion from the bottom to like midway, you're moving that weight using your back. And think about it, whenever you're at the arm wrestling table, you will not be able to do that. If I'm at the table with you and I stretch your arm, you won't be able to cheat curl your way out of that position. So if you think about it, what you do gain from cheetah curls is your ability to put a stop to somebody who has a really strong initial hit. Agree or disagree, right? Obviously, there's a place for everything. I want to move throughout my matches. And I'm probably the best in the world at pulling myself back from a bad position. And I'm not a guy who does straight curls. All in all, love the training. Seeing him now versus seeing him 10 years ago, we're looking at a different person. But it's fun to see him still have that same desire and passion to go after it. My name is Evgeny Prudnik, and today I will teach you how to train your top roll. It's always good to learn how to train the top roll. The first exercise is called riser liftoffs. Okay, so I like the way he's doing his riser liftoffs. Because a lot of people, you'll see them train the riser this way. And I've never seen somebody lose their wrist in a match and be able to pull it back. So he's engaging the riser and pulling with it, so that's good. This isn't just to train your starting position. It's specifically to train those top roll hits. So I also like the way he's doing, he's training for these top roll hits, letting the weight come down and then kind of push it up like he's hitting into it. This motion is causing you to want to jump your wrist and your job is to fight that and keep your knuckles high. I think the Eastern Europeans are the guys who really spotlighted arm wrestling specific training with these, you know, handles, belts, and training the specific like micro muscles that you have to use to be good at. So that's pretty awesome. The next exercise is also meant to target your riser, however, in a different way. Here we have static riser holds. Unlike the previous exercise that is targeted specifically at the head of your initial top roll movement, this one overall strengthens your riser and your top roll through a static hold. Yeah, this is very good stuff. Static holds through the riser with the belt over the knuckle. Hold this for five to eight seconds both hands stuff like this i would have never even thought about doing 30 years ago when i started wrestling with each set we're going to be adding more weight until we reach our top set you can do the same exercise by leaning with your elbow on the table it's a very efficient way of training 
your your top row muscles, your riser, pronation, all that stuff. All, everything he's going through here right now is the easiest, simplest way to start, you know, improving your arm wrestling skill and strength. And the last exercise is quite fundamental, foundational, um, meant to target your brachialis and to train your angles. And this is a reverse biceps curl. Placing your thumb over the bar will ensure that you also put a lot of work on your fingers. Reverse curls are, are a great exercise for our muscle. Now we get a little tabletop. We're working our risers again. We're working in the strap specifically because if two arm wrestlers go against each other and both engage their riser, most likely there's going to be a slip. That's why we're in a strap here. You start by dumping your wrist and disengaging your riser while your opponent is engaging their riser. Take turns in dumping your wrist first and then engaging your riser. So I like this riser training on the table. I've never trained it, I've just done it when gripping up on the table. Great training though. All right, so I haven't seen this footage yet, but I'm really excited because it's Andre Pushkar. Was a dear friend of mine, basically my benchmark, who helped push me to keep getting better and better and better. So I'm excited to watch this footage. We start our training with light weights. The main purpose of the beginning of the training session is to get really warm, really warmed up. And that applies to any sport, not just arm wrestling. So the first thing he says is you need to warm up. <laughs> so I catch so much hell because I haven't warmed up anything in probably 15 years. I haven't warmed up before arm wrestle. I haven't warmed up before I lifted weights. It's what everyone probably else does. The reason I didn't warm up before a match is if I felt any pain in the warm up, mentally I felt like I wouldn't go as hard as I can. So if I didn't know that there was any pain, as soon as they said go, I'm just going to hit as hard as I can. Our first exercise is a riser and back pressure exercise. Use a loop, use a belt, apply pressure through the knuckle of your index finger. You want to move in a diagonal fashion across the pad. If you commit to doing this exercise, you're going to develop a really good riser and back pressure. Over the top knuckle, riser engaged, posting top row. Looks good. I've actually never tried that before. Now right here, we're performing this exercise in a dynamic fashion, but there are other approaches to it as well, right? You have a static and you have a plyometric approach to the same movement. Static is just holding the weight, and the plyometric approach is using weight above your max effort weight for static or dynamic, holding the weight for a certain amount of time, and slowly releasing it, basically working through the negative. That's plyometric approach. Amongst the three approaches, the plyometric approach engages the most amount of muscle fibers. How often should somebody do this kind of training? Once a week or once every two weeks? Plyometrics are highly effective, but at the same time, they're very taxing. So you do want to have a decent amount of rest period in between training sessions. How many times per week do you train yourself? I have three training sessions a week. And are all of them arm wrestling specific? Uh, no, not really. Let's say one training session can be devoted to my top roll and my hook. The next training session will be chest and triceps. And the third training session will be just like some uh, basic strength exercise and table time. I mean, at the same time, I can't say that I have a specific routine that I'm following. I know my body, I can feel my body when it's ready or when it's not. And essentially, if I'm supposed to train my top roll today, but I feel that my pronator is fatigued, I'm not gonna train. I'll find something else to train that day. And generally speaking, it's much better to undertrain than overtrain. So this is not a philosophy that I followed, but I like hearing Andre say it. He just goes by how his body feels. It's interesting hearing him say that, that he only trained three sessions a week too. And he was one of the best to ever do it, you know. Probably the most dominant super heavyweight arm wrestler in WAF history. So there you go, pretty good stuff. This exercise is perfect for targeting your inner biceps, elbow tendon, and your hand. You can move in a dynamic fashion here, or you can just hold it for statics. You can also train your hand just like this. Your arm is holding the weight in a static position, and your hand is working in a dynamic fashion. We saw how intense Dennis warms up, and now that I heard that Andre, who I had great respect for, plays so much importance on getting warmed up, I decided to change my ways. I've never warmed up before, but now I will. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for notifications.